Founded in 1884, Derby County are one of the most historic clubs in English football, and alongside 11 other clubs, were one of the founding members of the Football League. Although in recent years, after many close promotion attempts, the club finds itself in its worst position in modern history, on the brink of being relegated to League One. So, how have things gone so wrong for Derby County? Well, let's take it back to 2008, Derby finished rock bottom of the Premier League and were branded as the worst team in Premier League history, picking up just 11 points all season. On the final day, they were beaten 4-0 by Reading and it was clear that changes were needed at the club. That's just not acceptable and I think supporters have said they're not fit to wear a shirt and the large majority of them, do you know what, enough. After their relegation to the Championship, Derby had three consecutive seasons of mediocrity when they finished in the bottom half of the Championship, with one of their lowest points coming in the 5-2 loss against local rivals Nottingham Forest at the City Ground. Still we play on, five minutes of stoppage time played. Although after this, things slowly started to turn in the right direction for Derby, under manager Nigel Clough, Signing such as Craig Bryson and Jason Shackle guided Derby to a top half finish in 2012. This was followed up by a 10th place finish in 2013 and suddenly Derby looked like they were a team that was just a few additions away from challenging for the top six. The 2013-14 season came around and big changes were happening at the club. Derby loaned in the likes of Patrick Bamford, George Thorne and Andre Wisdom as well as signing the likes of Lee Grant, Chris Martin, Johnny Russell and Craig Forsyth. Suddenly, Derby looked like serious contenders in the championship. And with the big names coming in, loftier expectations came from the board. After a slow start to the season, which saw Derby win just three of their first ten matches, manager Nigel Clough was sacked, with Derby sat 14th in the championship. And thus beginning the managerial merry-go-round that we've had ever since. In comes Steve McLaren for his first stint at the club, and things start off well, with Derby going on an unbelievable winning streak as they win seven consecutive matches from November through December, which pushes them up to fourth in the championship. Derby were absolutely flying, and a win at Oakwell put them up to second in the championship going into the new year. Their good form carried on for the rest of the season, with a particular highlight coming in their 5 0 win over Nottingham Forest. Derby finished the season third, having won five of their last six matches. The team was scoring goals for fun, with Chris Martin ending the season with 25 goals, and this goal scoring form continued into the playoffs as they swept aside Brighton 6 2 on aggregate and headed into the playoff final. Derby came into the game against QPR at Wembley as the overwhelming favourites. They dominated the game but couldn't find a breakthrough and in the 90th minute, with QPR's only shot on target, Bobby Zamora stuck it in the top corner to sink Derby County. Puts it into an area, Keo, Zamora! Unbelievable! QPR midfielder Joey Barton even admitted after the game that he felt sorry for Derby and that they had played fantastic and deserved the win, but it would be another season in the championship for the Rams. And around this time, local businessman Mel Morris first got involved with the club, originally buying a 22% stake in the club. And Derby wasted no time in splashing the cash the next summer. They wanted promotion. They spent three million on George Thorne, as well as shelling out for the likes of Cyrus Christie, Ryan Shotton, and Stephen Warnock, as well as loaning in the likes of Jesse Lingard, Jack Butlin, Darren Bent, and Tom Ince. Derby got off to a wonderful start to the season and spent 15 game weeks inside the top two, and at the end of February, they looked on track to at least finish in the top six. But after going on the disastrous run towards the end of the season, which saw Derby win just two of their last 12 matches, they went into the final day against Reading, needing just a point to guarantee them a top six finish. They lost the game 3-0 and fell to eighth in the table, the first time Derby had been outside the top six since September. Steve McLaren was sacked shortly after. Next up for Derby was Carlo Ancelotti's assistant, Paul Clements. The club seriously splashed the cash this summer, bringing in the likes of Bradley Johnson, Tom Ince, Jacob Butterfield, Andy Vyman, 
and Scott Carson, with over 21 million being spent this summer. Shortly after this, Mel Morris then bought out Derby's previous American shareholder to become the club's outright owner and chairman. After a fairly slow start to the season, things picked up, and after beating Fulham on Boxing Day, Derby went top of the championship. Derby once again invested into their squad in January, bringing in the likes of Nick Blackman and Abdul Kamara for a combined fee of around £4 million. But manager Paul Clement would only last a few matches more, with Derby giving on a seven game winless run. He was sacked in February, with Derby sat fifth in the championship. Derby chairman Mel Morris claimed that the team weren't playing the Derby way. Well. Derby's academy director Darren Wassell was given the job until the end of the season. Derby did finish the season inside the top six and faced Hull across two playoff semi-final legs. They lost the first leg 3-0 at home and despite their best efforts to come back in the second leg, they lost the tie 3-2 on aggregate. Wassell then wasn't given the job. Nigel Pearson was next up, and along with him came the expectations of promotion. Derby sold star midfielder Jeff Hendrick for £10 million to Burnley and wasted no time in pumping the money back into the squad. Matej Vidra and Akechi Anya both arrived from Watford for a combined fee of around £12 million. But Derby got off to a disaster of a start to the season, winning just one of their opening nine matches. Manager Nigel Pearson then fell out with chairman Mel Morris after claiming that he was using a drone to spy on his training sessions. Pearson then left the club by mutual consent in October with Derby sat 20th in the league. McLaren is back and things start off well as Derby go on a seven game winning streak. Going into the new year, they are sat just one point outside the top six. In January, they signed striker David Nugent in a bid to finish in the playoffs, but things rapidly unravel for McLaren once again. They go on a torrid run of form in the new year and a 3-0 loss to Brighton was the final nail in the coffin for McLaren. Get on your dancing shoes. Gary Rowett is up next, who guides Derby to a 9th place finish in the championship. The big sale Derby made this summer was selling Tom Ince to Huddersfield Town. They replaced him with Leicester City winger Tom Lawrence, as well as bringing in the likes of Tom Huddleston, Curtis Davis and Joe Ledley. Derby do well this season and finish inside the top 6, although the season wasn't without its controversy. Most notably, when Derby got a game called off against Cardiff due to snowfall in the area, Cardiff manager Neil Warnock claimed that Derby instead wanted to get the game called off due to the Rams injury problems at the time. It also prompted this leaked WhatsApp message from Cardiff captain Sean Morrison talking about Derby's Richard Keogh being leaked. Hi Richard, Richie, uh, just want to say mate, um, you're a mug. You run, oh give me the ball, give me the ball, oh yeah I really want the ball. And I get the ball and I'll just dribble as fast as I can, 10 yards, and then just cut back into the other centre half because I'm shit at football. Derby did finish inside the playoffs, but lose 2 1 on aggregate to Fulham over two legs. Shortly after this, manager Gary Rower asks to leave the club to join Stoke, despite previously pledging his loyalty to the club. Stop crying your heart out. Frank Lampard is then hired as his replacement, and the club is officially renamed to Frank Lampard's Derby County. He brings some serious loan talents with him, snapping up the likes of Harry Wilson, Mason Mount, and Fakayo Tamori. With Derby already tiptoeing the line of financial fair play, this felt like a bit of a now or never moment for Derby. Their top scorer from the previous season, Matej Vidra, is sold, and the club splashes over 12 million on Martin Waghorn, Jack Marriott, George Evans, Florian Joseph Zoon, Scott Malone, and Dwayne Holmes. Three years on, and none of these players play for the club anymore. Derby have a relatively consistent season where they bounce between 7th and 6th. In January, they even signed Ashley Cole to add some more experience to the squad. But the major talking point is, of course, Spygate. Frank Lampard was not happy when he found out that Leeds United manager Marcelo Bielsa had been spying on their training sessions ahead of the two clubs meeting in the league. Leeds go on to beat Derby 2-0. Derby also released their accounts for the year and they amazingly managed to report a £40 million profit. 
This came quite controversially after Mel Morris had sold Derby Stadium to a company that he owns. The sale of the stadium meant that Derby were within the frameworks of financial fair play. And although it seems like bending the rules, the decision to sell the stadium is within EFL guidelines. Derby went on to make the playoffs that year and went on to face up against Leeds. Leeds won in the first leg at Derby 1-0 and the odds were stacked against Frank Lampard's side heading into the second leg. But in one of the most incredible turn of events, Derby won the tie 4-3 on aggregate and progressed to their second playoff final in the past six seasons. In the playoff final, they went up against Aston Villa, who had lost in the final the previous year, and Lampard made the brave decision to start without a recognised striker. This went on to backfire as Derby went on to lose 2 1, and Lampard departed shortly after, taking the Chelsea job. Round, round, get around, I get around. Philip Koku was hired as his replacement, and their big summer signing was Christian Bielik from Arsenal, who they spent over £8 million on. He's gone on to miss the majority of the following two seasons due to injury. They also announced a deal for Wayne Rooney, who would join up with the squad in January. Controversially, it was reported that their sponsors, 32 Red, would be paying his wages, a claim which was denied by the club. On the pitch, things were fairly uneventful for the club, with Derby going on to finish 10th in the league. But off the pitch, there was plenty of controversy. After a squad night out, Tom Lawrence and Mason Bennett were found guilty of drink driving and had to appear in court after crashing their cars. Club captain Richard Keir was a passenger in one of the cars and was ruled out of action for 15 months due to an injury he had sustained during the crash. Controversially, Dobby then decided to sack captain Richard Keogh but stand by the two drivers, Tom Lawrence and Mason Bennett. Later, Richard Keogh went on to win a dismissal case against the club and they were ordered to pay him £2.3 million in compensation. After this, the drama continued off the pitch for Derby as the EFL charged them with breaching two rules relating to financial fair play. The first was the overvaluation of their stadium when Mel Morris sold it to a company he owned and the second was relating to the EFL sustainability rules. Both of these charges, however, were eventually dropped by an independent commission. The next season, Season, Derby are limited in who they can sign and after 11 matches they are sat bottom of the league and manager Philip Koku is dismissed. Ch -ch 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 Wayne Rooney replaces him and thanks to a run of results over Christmas they managed to pull away from the relegation zone although another poor run towards the end of the season drags them back in. A failed takeover attempt later and Derby are in a mess both on and and off the pitch. On the final day of the season, they draw 3-3 with Sheffield Wednesday and Cardiff managed to take points off Rotherham, meaning that Derby survived by a single point. Although, this isn't yet the end of the story. After the season's conclusion, the EFL once again charged Derby for a breach, this time for their amortisation policy. Derby have since been fined £100,000, but the EFL are still pushing for a point deduction for the 20-21 season, which would see Derby relegated to League One and Wickham take their place in the Championship. Another possible scenario is that Derby start next season in the Championship, but with a point deduction. As of recording, this is yet to be concluded, and Derby's battle with the EFL is set to continue with no ceasefire in sight. And heading into next season, things are looking pretty bleak for Derby. Unless this situation is resolved in good time, then they're going to find themselves in serious trouble. Currently, they only have 13 contracted senior players still at the club. So there we have it, that's the story of Derby County and how things have unravelled for them so rapidly over the last few years. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more of this kind of thing, make sure to leave a like and leave your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching.